Hi, welcome to today's issue of Travel Talk. I'm Suzanne from Holiday Travel. Joining us today is Beverly from Princess Cruise. Welcome, Beverly. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's my pleasure. So I'm I know delighted. Princess goes all over the, the world, but today we're going to talk about Alaska, one of my favorite destinations, I think one of your favorite destinations. There's so much to see and do in Alaska. Um, and Princess, Princess is Alaska, isn't it? Well, Princess has been up in Alaska for a, a number of years, for 30-something years, and we have put a lot of time and a lot of investment in yep. uh, uh, not only at sea, but also on the land. Um, and we just have a special place in our hearts for Alaska as a destination. It is. It's a great destination. Yep, um, it is. So let's talk a little bit. We've got train, we've got um, lodges, obviously we've got the cruise ships, um, we've got destinations, um, tours and what have you. Right. So let's let's kind of take them one so at a it's, time. It's like the movie. It's, you know, planes, trains, and automobiles, yep. <laughs> and also yep. cruise ships. Cruise ships, <laughs> yep, yep. So, um, well, let's see, where should we start? Um, there's just a lot to cover. So why don't we start with um, the cruise part of okay. it, the cruising yep. part of it. Um, so you go out of Seattle or Vancouver, which? We, we go, well, both of those, both of those? actually, okay. Seattle All right. and Vancouver and San Francisco. Oh, wow, okay. So we can, what might be fun to do is um, let's have a scenario. Okay. Uh, getting on the flight in Boston. Yeah. And you would fly to Seattle. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, maybe stay a day or two in Seattle beforehand. And then you would take a cruise up the coast, the inside passage. Okay. Uh, and then the ship would stop in three ports of call. All right. Ketchikan, Juneau, and Skagway. And in that itinerary, you would do um, either Hubbard Glacier or Glacier Bay. Mm -hmm. um, one or the other itinerary so that you have uh, a stop at a glacier yeah. always, which is really yes, important. Yeah, fabulous. Um, and then the ship would turn around and come back down to Seattle. Okay. So that's a seven day. Yeah. That would be a seven day cruise. And we refer to that as a seven day inside passage round trip. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do, which is very similar to that, is instead of seven days, you'd start in San Francisco. Yeah. And people love that because San Francisco is, of course, a great city. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people take advantage of either staying before in San Francisco for a few days or afterwards. Um, but that's that's a ten day. Okay. Um, and I, and I should qualify this for uh, your watching and listening audience um, that when we talk about days, we're talking about overnights that you stay on the ship. Yeah. So. Uh, seven night, when we say seven seven days, yeah. it's actually seven, seven nights. Seven nights. Yeah. Um, so the San Francisco one does basically the same itinerary okay. with an addition of Victoria okay. in the itinerary. Yeah. So you get to stay, stop in Victoria, yeah. and spend some time in Victoria. Um, very appealing to a lot. So yeah. the Seattle itinerary and the San Francisco itinerary are... Um, uh, appeal to families and multi generations, okay. uh, people of different ages and incomes that uh, might have not have a lot of time to spend in Alaska, um, a lot more time to spend in Alaska, which you would okay. do if you do the cruise and then the land part, right? Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so let's talk with, about Juneau. Um, state capital. Right, state um, capital. Trivia fact, it's the only landlocked state capital. It is the only landlocked state capital. So the only way you can get to Juneau is by air or come in by boat. Yep. So the seaplanes come in, and it's my understanding, and I think I have this right, that they only gather once a year. Um, the representatives in the House only oh, wow. gathers once a year. And they all fly in or come in by boat. Yeah. 
Um, the, the other thing I always, I always say um, is sort of an aside joke is, about Juno is that if you ever want a low mileage used car, yeah, there you, you could go. probably get one in Juno <laughs> exactly. um, because they have nowhere to go. Yeah. So the way it's situated is if, if you go to the east, you're going to bang up right against a mountain. And yeah. if you go to the west, you're going to fall in the ocean. So right. into yeah. the Pacific. Yeah. So that's why it's landlocked. Yeah. And there's Mendon Mendenhall Glacier, right. of course, yep. runs right into the town, yep. uh, right into the, and it's really a town. Uh, Juno is only has a population of about thirty six or seven thousand people. Not a lot. So it's a very small state yeah, capital it is, for yeah. a very yeah. very big. Yeah, uh, state. Area. Yeah. No, state. So one of the good things about Mendenhall Glacier is it's the most accessible, or one of the most right. accessible glaciers right. in Alaska, right. um, because it is so close to to Juneau. Exactly. You can, uh, there's a tour. You can take a tour bus, mm -hmm. and um, it, it'll empty you right out at the visitor center yeah. in Juneau, and um, I mean in Glacier Bay, and then you get off the bus and you can just walk right down yeah. to it. And yeah. Really I can see the, it up close yeah. and personal. I can remember the last time that I was there, um, as you walk along the, the boardwalk going out to the glacier, right. mm -hmm. there were stakes in the, um, alongside showing how far the, the um, glaciers receded really in the past seated. few years. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's amazing. When were you there, Susan? It's been a f couple of years couple since of I was years. in June. I've been, I was in Alaska a couple of years ago, but it's been five or six, I guess, years since I was well, in Juneau. I started. Um, my first trip to Alaska was in somewhere around 1983, okay. 84. Yeah. And um, I've been up there about seven times, eight yeah. times since then. And there's just, there, it's, the evidence is there. Yeah. I mean, there's just no denying yeah. that, the, that the glaciers are receding. Yeah. Um, so it's a good incentive for people to make their plans to yeah. get up there get because the, the glaciers are really the number one reason people to go to Alaska. Yeah. So there are three big re there are three big reasons right. that people want to go to Alaska. Um, the glaciers, um, the animals, okay. and um, the, of course the, the uh, McKinley, the mountain. Yeah. Um, the scenery. Denali National, right. McKinley, yeah. But I always, and I always tell people you can, we have beautiful scenery in New England. Mm -hmm. We have mountains in New England. Yeah. You can go to Maine and see a moose. Yeah. But we don't have glaciers. Right. Yeah. And, and so my idea, uh, my thought is that the glaciers are the really driving factor. Yeah. Besides the fact that Alaska is just, it's unusual. Yeah. It's so big with so little population. Right. So yeah. So you have a whole different sense of it yeah. still being somewhat primitive and natural and uh, um, so just interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. All right, and then let's see Ketchikan. Ketchikan's known for its lumberjacks. Yeah, um, that's one thing it's known for. Yeah, it's um, fishing, fishing, salmon fishing. Yes, salmon yep. fishing, very popular yep. um, in, in Ketchikan. Totem poles. Totem poles. You can take a short excursion now to what they call Totem Pole Park. Yeah. And that's where there's a whole demonstration. Um, takes you back, shows you the whole culture yeah. of totem poles, how they were used for communication, one of the first languages yeah. for um, Native Americans, and the um, and how they're still reproducing them now and yeah. producing them now. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Arti I mean, yeah. the artisans are just unbelievable up in Alaska. Oh, they're, they're fabulous, yeah. Um, yeah. Everything from jewelry to, you know, the woodwork, everything right. is just yeah. wonderful. But to go back to Ketchikan, um, it's very small. It's a tiny it is, little yes. town. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, but it was a little trivia. It was a stopping off place. Um, I know this isn't an X-rated show, so I'll be <laughs> family show. I'll be very careful what I yeah. say here. But it was a, it was the stopping off place for the gold miners. Yeah. And they would stop there and have a little R and R. Little red light district. Little red yeah. light district Is it down Street? in the Creek, Creek Street. Yeah. And the the salmon run right underneath it, so you can stand on the bridge. Yeah. Right there and just watch the salmon yeah. run, uh, right right up. But yeah. the, they. They've reproduced uh, Creek Street a little bit, and there's uh, um, 
there's uh, Dolly's house, and yeah. Dolly was a very interesting character. So Ketchikan is fun. Yeah. And yeah. they have the best candy there. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. There's a store there in Ketchikan, and it's called Ketchikandies. Oh, wow. And they produce all their chocolates yeah. right there. So you can't, I mean, you wow. just get sucked into it. You can't even walk by it. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's, whoops. Yeah. Um, so I tell people all the time, you, got, you can't miss it. If can't you're a chocolate it, yeah. lover, go to yeah. Ketchikan Candies. Yeah, yeah. 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 Was, last, actually, last time I was in Ketchikan, I did a sea kayak. Mm. We went out kayaking yes. into the ocean, yes. which was great. It wasn't, it wasn't as strenuous as I expected, but yeah. It was a great, no, they've great all, something different. <clears throat> they've all got, yeah. all of these places uh, have harbor areas. Yeah. So Juneau and Ketchikan have um, secluded, har you know, nice harbor yeah. areas. Um, and of course, all the seaplanes come in, in Ketchikan particularly. I mean, if you can just stand there all day and watch them land and take yeah. off and land and take off. So there is uh, a nice area there to put in yeah. a kayak and do yeah. some sea kayaking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Skagway. 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 Skagway's a, um, an, another town that is actually been reproduced from back in the gold miner yeah. times. And that was the point where, um, Skagway was a point where they boarded the narrow gauge railroad. And the narrow gauge railroad took them up to the mountain right. for mining. Yep. And it's, um, it has a lot of excellent shops in Skagway. Mm -hmm. But the Narrow Gauge Railroad is still running, yep. and it is the most popular excursion we have for yeah. Skagway. It's a great excursion. Yes, yeah. it's a great excursion. Yeah. You can just do the train, or you can do the train and a combination of uh, canoeing on the lake when you get up to yeah. the top. Um, so there's a, a variety of things that you can yeah. do. but. Um, people really enjoy that. There's also yeah. bicycling, and the other big thing in Ketchikan is helicopter. Okay. The helicopter tours are very, very popular. Yeah, in going out onto the glacier. Yep, yep, yeah. exactly. Sightseeing yeah. and so yeah. forth. Yeah. So as we're heading north, um, Sitka, do you stop in Sitka? We yeah. do not stop in Sitka. Okay, all right. Um, at least on, mo on most of our itineraries. Yep. Um, there, it has come and has gone, and um, actually we have some itineraries coming out in tw 2018, yeah. um, and uh, Sitka is going to um, come back reappear. In. Yeah, right. Good. Um, and then we, we end up, um, if we're doing a, a one-way northbound, we end up up um, near Anchorage, we end up in okay. Whittier. Okay, so now, now we're doing a whole different itinerary. Yep. So we talked about San Francisco, right? and we talked about Seattle, uh, and the three port stops of those two, which are Skagway, Juneau, and Ketchikan. But then there is um, the one-way itineraries, yeah. and they start in Vancouver. Okay. Um, and basically do a very similar itinerary of the Inside Passage yeah. with those, with your three basic stops right. of Ketchikan, Skagway, and Juneau. And then you have two glacier experiences on Okay. It. So this is where Glacier Bay comes in on all of these itineraries. All right. So you stop in Glacier Bay, and if you're going northbound, you will also stop in College Fjords Glaciers. Yeah. So you get to have two experiences on the mm -hmm. ship. And then our, sh our ships on Princess stop in a little town, a little port called Whittier, which is right outside of Anchorage. Yeah. And that's where the trains come in. Okay. So the train will pick up the passengers that want to go to the interior. Okay. So when you pull in to when you pull in in the morning, yeah. you would get off the train, off the ship. I'm sorry, you'd get off the ship. Yep. Okay. And walk down the. Actually, you just walk right off the ship, um, onto where the ra where the train is. Okay. It's just right there yeah. and you can see it. Uh, it's amazing. It's just so much fun. It's such a different experience. You're yeah. like uh, right away, oh my gosh, now we're on a whole other adventure. We're right. on our yeah. way on the other adventure. And then the train will take you on up into the interior. Okay. Um, and that takes you up to our lodges. All so right. you want to spend time at the Prince's Lodge. Yeah. Now we're getting into a longer 
vacation time. Yep, right. So it would be seven days still on the ship, yep. but then four days, five days, six days, seven days, you have that kind of option for right. land. Okay. Um, from Whittier, then, you, you would take the train directly to the wilderness. Okay. Um, and how long a ride is that about? Well, if you, we have a variety of itineraries okay. that you can choose from. Yep. But if you take the train, if you take the itinerary that goes directly to the Denali Princess Lodge, okay. which is the one that's right outside of uh, um, Denali National Park, right. if you take that, that's about a seven hour trip. Okay. But you get up there the same day yep. as you disembark from the ship. Okay. Um, for a lot of people, sometimes some of the itineraries you stop in Anchorage and maybe you do an overnight in Anchorage and for some people they want to get right up to the wilderness so we offer that okay. option yep. of getting right up, right to the wilderness. Right. Then you have a choice. This is where it gets a little complicated okay. for people right. out there. So, uh, And that's why you're important, Suzanne, because you, you're there to advise people on what choices, itinerary yeah. that they really want and what's right. best for them. Yeah. Um, so uh, people can spend two nights, which is what I always suggest, a yeah. minimum of two nights at the Denali Lodge yeah. so that you could spend time in the park. Right. Then you can move by train again okay. from Denali to our um, lodge that we have in McKinley. Yeah. It's in outside of Talkeetna, yeah. and it's about a 30-mile direct sight line to the mountain. Okay. To Denali Mountain, yeah. So it's situated and was built and designed specifically to get a really good look at yeah. Denali. I've been there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Did you see yeah. it? Yes. Oh. Not from the lodge. Um, we were driving and we saw oh. we saw the mountain from okay. a yeah. The there's an expression. Um, well, it's similar to what we say when we have a lot of rainy days. We can say it about today. You know, the sun has come out. You know, yeah. we get all excited in the exactly. summertime when the sun has come out. Yeah. Well, they get very excited in Alaska when the mountain comes out, and yeah. they refer to it that way. Yeah. They say, the mountain is out today, the yeah. mountain is out today, because uh, Denali uh, creates its own weather patterns and has its own weather that's separate than from Kind of like Mount, um, Mount Washington. Mount Washington, Washington only yep. just two bigger. times, three times yeah. bigger. Um, so one minute you could look at it and be completely under a bank of clouds and then mm -hmm. the next minute there it is yeah so have to be quick right on yeah. top of things <laughs> yeah so that's at the McKinley Lodge and Blue. isn't it back to, to the mountain for a second sure. isn't it like only 20 percent of the people see the, the mountain true. because it is such a, a, a big cloud bank up there when I do yeah. travel shows yeah. uh, people that have been to Alaska come up to me yeah guess what we saw the mountains. That's the <laughs> first thing they'll say yeah. is we saw Denali. That's yeah. the very first thing that, yeah. that people report because it is a big deal. It is, yeah. And they'll announce it on the train. Yeah. They'll announce it on the motor coaches. Yeah. They'll post it at the lodges yeah. that they expect that the maybe the mountain will come out today. Exactly, so yeah. It's really, yeah. It's, it's really yeah. a big deal. It's a go what I call a goosebump yeah. moment to yeah. see that mountain. In Talkeetna, um, people h have heard about that, and sometimes it's, it's a little niggling town, but it's it's the jumping off point for people that are, are going up hiking, isn't it? Isn't that yes, what it's famous that, well for? Well, that's one of, and it's tiny. It, it's, it's like it's, 200 yeah. people. Yeah. But that's where the train station is. Right. And yeah. uh, it's in the middle of nowhere, and that's where it is. So yeah. in order to get to Talkeetna from our lodge, it's about a 40-minute ride, yeah. um, which also indicates how remote also and in the wilderness right, yeah. are lodges. Yeah. A lot of kayaking. Uh, Talkeetna is known for its kayaking yeah. uh, and also for the hiking. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So there's not a whole lot Not else a lot there. to do. Yeah. No, not yeah, a lot we to ate do. lunch there and I said, yeah. okay, that was yeah. two hours, okay. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. As a result, a lot of people stay at the at the Princess Lodge yeah. um, and just enjoy that yeah, break exactly. that they have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then um, you can come back and spend, you can also overnight in Anchorage. Okay. You can do Anchorage as part of your yep. cruise tour. That's an option. That's the main corridor now. So the okay. main corridor is from the ship up to Denali, yep. 
and then back down, tracing it back down to uh, McKinley, and then Anchorage, and you'd fly home. Okay. Um, and that, that, that's a seven day and a four day, so that would make it an 11 day yeah. trip. A lot of people uh, also um, have an option and take the option of staying some time in Vancouver mm -hmm. or staying uh, in the beginning, st flying right. out early yeah. for Vancouver. Yeah. Or if they end up. Now, what goes up has to come down. Mm -hmm. So we talked about starting in Vancouver and taking yeah. the cruise yeah. and then doing the land. The other right. option is to fly in and do the land yeah. and then end up on the ship. Yeah. Um, and I should mention Fairbanks. Fairbanks we haven't talked yeah. about Fairbanks. Yeah. So you can go all the way up to Fairbanks yeah. um, and spend uh, a day or two in Fairbanks. So you could fly into Fairbanks. You can fly into Fairbanks. And then stay head in south. Fairbanks yep. and then head south. And your next stop would be Denali. Denali yep. And then your next stop would be McKinley. Yep. And then you'd uh, uh, go on down into Anchorage, Anchorage and fly yep. home. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Fairbanks, the two things in Fairbanks that are probably the most popular um, are the um, paddle wheeler yep. and the gold mining. Yeah. It's what people like to do in yep. Fairbanks. Um, but there's two other lodges and areas that we cover also uh -huh. in Alaska. And one is Copper River. Yep. So we have a lodge uh, in Copper River. It's the eastern part of Alaska. Yep. So this is a part that people don't go to very I've often. I've been to that lodge. Have you been yeah, to that? I think oh. I've been to all of your lodges. I haven't been to um, Fairbanks, but I've yeah, oh. been to Kenai too. Yeah. Um, I think Copper River is, um, I mean, it's small, it's unique. It's on the Wrangell-St. Elias National Park yeah. mountain range. Yeah. Um, so uh, you, you're seeing a whole different uh, bank of mountains and a yeah. whole uh, different perspective of Alaska yeah. over at Copper River. Yeah. And it's like family over there. They're just, they just yeah. greet you. They're lined up. They can't wait. And it's all by motor coach. Yeah. But you have um, part of the trip is uh, you go from Whittier and you go uh, across by Catamaran to Valdez, where and that's where you pick yeah. up the uh, motor coach to go to Copper yeah. River. So it's for people that really want it all. That's a great experience. Is, yeah. um, in addition, we have another lodge down on the Kenai. Yeah. And the Kenai is uh, south, south and slightly west of Anchorage, about about an hour, okay. about an hour. And um, the unique thing about the Kenai is, well, first of all, the river. So the river is known throughout Alaska and the United States for the fly fishing. Yeah, uh, and it's shared with the bears. <laughs> so you're there so you're fly fighting, fishing, yeah. and all of a sudden you look across at the bank, across the river, and yeah. there's you got company. four-legged friends yeah. come down to see, <laughs> make yeah. sure you're not catching all the fish. Yeah. Um, and then we do great river floats down the Kenai. Okay. So that's a wonderful excursion. There are individual little cabins yeah. at the Kenai's with their own little wood-burning stove. It's a yeah. favorite place, and Alaskans go there in droves. Yeah. They, they love they Weekend love the vacation Kenai. away. The scenery, yeah. the drive down there yeah. from Anchorage to the Kenai is one yeah. of the most beautiful drives in all of Alaska. Yeah. All of Alaska. Yeah. So, yeah. And the food, I mean, all the lodges have wonderful restaurants, and you can get everything from pizza and sandwiches yeah, and burgers right up to yeah. a full, yeah. beautiful, prepared, yeah. beautifully yeah. prepared. Uh, dinner yeah. and we both on the ship and of course um, on, in the lodges what we do is our we design our menu mm -hmm. um, specifically for Alaska yeah. so that yeah. you really feel like when you're eating the salmon it is not frozen right <laughs> it yeah. is fresh salmon yeah. yes. we yeah. didn't talk about um, we haven't talked about shore excursions okay. and all the different yep. things that you can do. Oh, so there's so much to do in Alaska. So much to yeah. do. Flight, all right, start with flight seeing. Okay. Um, so flying over the glaciers, walking on the glaciers, taking yep. a helicopter out and doing an actual walk on the glaciers. Yep. Then, of course, all the fishing, um, the dog sledding, dog sled going oh, out to the dog. Holding the little puppies. Holding oh. those people. Puppies, and by the way, we bring the puppies on the ship. You do. It's called Puppies in the Atrium. Okay. 
and uh, Libby Riddles, who was the first woman to win the Iditarod, yeah. she, um, she comes in and talks about her dogs, yeah. and then they bring the puppies in, and wow. they let them, they just let them off on the floor in our uh. atrium of our beautiful ships, which we haven't even, uh, we haven't even talked about the yeah. ships, but, um, so everything, when you go to Alaska, when you go to Alaska on Princess, you feel like you're on ships and actually doing an itinerary and taking a vacation that's geared strictly for the destination. Exactly, yeah. It's not like you're on a ship that was maybe designed for the Caribbean and is happens Isn't to be like, up in Alaska. Yeah. This is th these yeah. these are these are ships and programs and shore excursions um, that are specifically specifically for yeah. um, uh, the destination of yeah. Alaska, yeah. and and that will the, the synergy between um, the destination and the ships and the lodges and all the people that work there. And it's a seamless It all program. just melds together. It, yeah. And it's a yeah. seamless, pro everything's taken care yeah. of. You know, you're yeah. pre-checked in, all your luggage is taken care of. Um, and it's just, it's just such a yeah. delightful experience. Yeah, yeah. And obviously it's seasonal. So we start, what, mid-May? Mid-May mid until about mid-September. Okay. Mid-May until, until about the second week of June is, yeah. is a value season. Okay. Um, and the end of August till about the middle of September yep. is is also value okay. season. So peak season runs the end of June right up until the beginning of September. Yep. Um, and that's when your families, that's when um, uh, the, the, the most popular time is. And yep. when frankly, just like in New England, it's when you hope that the weather's gonna be yeah. the best. Yeah, and it's like New England, you never know. I've had customers that right. have been out one week and they've had fabulous weather, and then someone's gone out the following week and it's rained every day. Right. You know, so you just- You don't go you, for the weather. That's no. not what you do. Yeah. You, don't, you don't go for the weather. Yeah. It's like going to London, too. Exactly, and, yeah. And the weather is similar to what it is in May, in okay. Maine. Yeah. So in May, it's definitely cooler, cooler. just yep. like it is up in northern Maine. Right, yeah. Um, that's yeah. A, something that people can use as a guideline exactly. for, for yes. the weather too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But back to the back to Alaska, so not to be missed um, certainly is anything to do with the glaciers should not be missed. Yep. And the um, uh, narrow gauge railroad should Out not be Skagway, missed. Yeah. Uh, and any of the lectures that we do and any of the lodges. You bring locals on board? Yes, we do. On board we the bring ship. locals yep. and musicians and entertainers yep. on board. Um, uh, and, and, and in the lodges. And yeah. in McKinley, for example, we have a program in McKinley where the hikers come in and talk about their oh, wow. experience of hiking uh, up the mountain, climbing And the, the lodges remind me a lot of the National Park Lodges here. They've got yes. the huge fireplaces right. and the, the, the large um, patios or balconies oh, that you can just look out. You, yeah, everything is designed yeah. to make you feel like you're really in yeah. Alaska. Yeah. Exactly. I'm I could sit here and talk with you all day know, about Alaska. I know, um, I know. It's it's so one of my favorite places and and I know it's one of yours, but um, thank you so much well, for joining welcome. me. Well, you're welcome. This was my pleasure. I just yep. enjoyed it so much. Good. I love talking about it. Thank you. And thank you very much for joining us today on Travel Talk. I'm Suzanne from Holiday Travel.